The University of Mindanao has shown remarkable performance in the licensure examinations of its various programs. The real estate management rank as the country's top performing school during the June 2019 board exam. The nursing, elementary education, electrical and mechanical engineering, library science and social work programs have achieved performance more than 8% passing rates. Also in 2019, UM has reached an all-time high of producing 49 top-notchers with an unbeatable record of producing top one in the education and criminology programs for the past five years. Since 2014, UM has already produced 121 top-notchers in different licensure examinations leading other academic institutions in Region 11. To ensure sustainability on quality assurance of both of its programs and at the institutional level, UM continuously submits to different certification standards and accreditation evaluation. For this year, UM Main Campus has 40 of its programs visited for accreditation. 12 are for Level 4 evaluation. UM Tagum has 7 programs and UM Panabo has 4 programs submitted for preliminary evaluation. With these accreditation efforts, Pakukoa has given UM 3 recognitions and 4 special citations during its annual General Assembly. The Computer Science and Information Technology were also revisited by PCAB evaluators for its re-accreditation in the said body. The results of these visits, including those reports of the Institutional Sustainability Assessment of JED and the Philippine Quality Award, were used as inputs for continuous quality improvement of the university. Because of the university's quality assurance practices, the Commission on Higher Education has renewed the autonomous status of the University of Mindanao main campus and a new certification is granted to UM Digos as autonomous status and UM Tagum as deregulated status. This recognition of JET is given to academic institutions in the country with long tradition of integrity, untarnished reputation, commitment to excellence, and have sustainable and viable operations. The year 2019 was also a great one for the branches, with UM Panabo and UM Banzalan now joined the main Tagum and Digos campuses of having an ISO 9001-2015 certification. These campuses are the first to achieve such certification in their respective locations. In terms of enrollment, this year breaks the 10-year data for freshman enrollment. Despite presence of newly opened schools from Manila and the expansion of new programs from existing colleges and universities in the region, UM Maine has welcomed some 11,000 freshman students for the first semester. The aggressive promotions and enrollment campaigns of the university resulted in the total enrollment of more than 25,000 in the main campus and an aggregate enrollment of 44,400 across campuses. The five-year enrollment data shows an increasing number of enrollees, except in 2016 when the senior high school was first implemented in the country. In sustaining its academic excellence, the institution has done various innovations which evidently improve the quality of learning experiences and support services for the students. Examples of these is the implementation of the Outcomes Assessment Threshold, or OATH. This software program enhances the way the faculty monitors the academic performance of their students. The use of the Blackboard Learning Management System has been institutionalized, making more advanced opportunities for student and faculty virtual discussions. Continuous infrastructure improvement has been done to provide the stakeholders the best learning environment. 
the ongoing construction of the Learning Commons, a three-story library, and other infrastructure in the main campus and the branches are evidences enough to prove of the university's quest for continuous development. This year, the University of Mindanao opened new academic programs that will expand career choices of potential higher education students. The civil engineering program is expanded into four specialized fields, structural, water resource, transportation, and geotechnical. As a form of its commitment in providing programs which strengthen internationalization initiatives, the University of Mindanao, through its Institute of Languages, has offered various foreign and local language programs, faculty and student development, and programs promoting language and culture. With a goal of international inclusion, the University of Mindanao strengthened its international ties by creating more partnerships and networking opportunities. The University President, Dr. Guillermo P. Torres, Jr., sealed 10 new partnerships and agreements from six different countries. These partnerships are Hunan University and Gilin Tourism University in China, University Malaysia Pahang in Malaysia, Dogab Pils Medical College in Latvia, Maseno University in Kenya, Chuchi University of Science and Technology, and Chaoyang University in Taiwan, and Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta in Indonesia. These partnerships were due to the aggressive internationalization efforts of Dr. Torres as an active member of different academic networks. To fully maximize internship opportunities, the College of Teacher Education participated in the International Internship Initiative under the Southeast Asia Teacher Program of the Southeast Asian Ministers of Education Organization Regional Institute of Higher Education and Development. The teacher education of UM sends and receives student interns to and from universities in the Southeast Asian region. As of October 2019, UM sent a total of 19 outbound students and hosted nine inbound students under this program. Aside from the Southeast Asia teacher program, UM continuously sends outbound students abroad under the AIMS, UMAP, AUAP, and the Erasmus Mobility Plus programs. For this year, UM has sent 13 outbound students for short-term and long-term study to top-notch universities in Thailand, Malaysia, Taiwan, and Latvia, while UM has received a total of five inbound students from Malaysia and Latvia. In every road, a single milestone will lead one to its destination. The University of Mindanao, having traversed the road of innovation, internationalization, and academic revolution, has come to its destination where accomplishment, honor, and recognition flourish. With a strengthened research agenda, the university has bagged several recognitions and takes pride of its numerous outstanding accomplishments in the field of research. This year, the university hosted a National Research Congress and the first scientific meeting of the Philippine Coleopterological Network. This meeting of coleopterologists also produced the Tropical Journal of Coleopterology, a scientific journal that centers on the Philippine beetles the first in the country. Truly, the surge of the university's recognitions and accomplishments in the field of research reflects the university's contribution to the current pool of knowledge. Recognizing the idea that universities should lead in conducting innovations, the university launched its Technology Business Incubation Center through the Umasenso Hub, the first in Davao to provide training mentorship, and technology programs to technology entrepreneurs in the Davao region. This was established under the Higher Education Institution Readiness for Innovation and Technopreneurship Development Program of the DOST PCI EERD and the DOST Upscale Innovation Hub of the University of the Philippines in Diliman. 
UM's core values of excellence is truly manifested in the performance of students in various events and competitions. Researchers of students won awards and accolades from recognized organizations and their professional associations. Engineering students continue to shine in many events during research presentations of their professional organization's General Assembly, while the Business Administration students, once again, won in the BIDA Awards of the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry for their marketing projects. In the field of creative and performing arts, MMA for the past five years continuously won in the Vision Petron National Student Art Competition, winning grand prize in music category and first runner-up in the water-based painting category. The MMA program also won the Best Student Film and Shout Out Social Media Awards during the 16th Mindanao Film Festival. BS Entrepreneurship Major Michael De La Serna earned national recognition as he snagged the third spot of the singing competition of a popular noontime show. For public speaking competitions, two political science students bagged the first and third best novice speaker awards during the Asian English Olympics in Binus University in Jakarta, Indonesia. The UM Law students won the first debate on ANC Square Up, the VNA Law Debate Season 18, where law student Jeffrey Christian Hossel was declared best. Good afternoon. Welcome everyone to this webinar on tourism industry competitiveness and security applications. To our dear participants, please stand by for we are about to start our virtual program in a few minutes. Thank you. To ensure uh, this webinar to be well organized and smooth, let me remind you of the following housekeeping notes. To this uh, webinar, please be reminded that this is being recorded. Participants are automatically muted when joining Zoom. You may turn on your mic during the open forum. Any questions is welcome throughout this webinar. If you have questions, you may type it in the chat box. State your name and to whom you are addressing the question. 
questions will be answered at the end of each session or during the open forum. And lastly, slides and recording will be made available after the webinar. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, may we request everyone to please settle down for the singing of the national anthem. everyone. Thank God it's Friday. Mareyao and Salamat Siang. Welcome to this webinar on tourism industry competitiveness and security applications. And I am your host for this afternoon. I am Clarence Joy D. Alcaraz. And I am honored to acknowledge our esteemed guests and participants who joins us today and most especially our dear colleagues from Universitas Bayangkara, Jakarta Raya, Indonesia. And let me tell you about this webinar, that this will focus on the competitiveness on the global market that will also explain and present the key factors of challenges for tourism industry and its all activities. The goal of this webinar is to point out the significance of tourism industry for economic development and employment. And also to discuss and conclude on the importance of safety as the factor of competitiveness of the tourist destination. Without any further ado, let's commence this webinar by hearing an opening message from the VP for Institute of Pedagogical Advancement and Competitiveness of the University of Mindanao. Let us all welcome Dr. Pedrito Castillo II. Let us give a virtual applause, please. Good afternoon, everyone. 
a pleasant afternoon. I would like to express my profound respect and uh, greetings and gratitude as well to our uh, partner, university partner, um, Universita, uh, Universitas Bayangkara, Jakarta Raya, Indonesia, headed of course by their vice rector for academic affairs, Professor Tatang Ani Gumanti, the vice rector for cooperation, Dr. Dia Ayu uh, Permantasari, the dean of economics and business, Faculty, Dr. Ischangis Sastra Iharo, and the uh, deans and all the academic officers of the Universitas Bayangkara, Jakarta, Raya, Indonesia. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Good afternoon. Welcome to this a webinar on tourism industry competitiveness and security implications uh, spearheaded by our professional schools of the University of Mindanao uh, through its uh, dean, Dr. Eugenio S. Gohau Jr. and also um, spearheaded by uh, the College of Hospitality Education headed by the dean of uh, the dean and also the speaker of uh, this afternoon's webinar, Dean Florence Cristina Jimenez. All the officers as well of the College of Hospitality Education, a pleasant afternoon. The University of Mindanao, despite the COVID-19 pandemic, has never stopped searching for quality and excellence in terms of offering quality academic programs to its clientele. We are fully aware of the profound impact to the economy, particularly to the tourism industry of the COVID-19 pandemic. To be honest, Philippines is not also spare of the number of cases, in fact, surging number of cases of COVID-19. But the University of Mindanao, because of its quality assurance mechanism and its very strong commitment towards internationalization, we would like to renew and express our commitment to continue our partnership with Universitas Bayangkara Jakarta Raya Indonesia. We have long been considered as a, uh, a, a university that is leading in higher education in, in the Philippines. And also, to be honest, we also consider the Universitas Bayangkara Jakarta Raya to be a family already of the University of Mindanao because of our long-standing partnership. And for that, we would like to thank you, officers, the top management of the Universitas Bayangkara Jakarta Raya. Thank you, thank you very much. I hope our participants will really uh, take this opportunity, really grab, maximize this opportunity for this webinar because our dean, highly esteemed dean of the hospitality management of the University of Mindanao will, will speak. And she is one of our assets in the university. And she is one of uh, the leading experts in terms of tourism management. Having said that, um, for two hours, let's focus, let's listen, let's learn. And in behalf of the top management of the University of Mindanao, we wish to thank Universitas Bayangkara Jakarta Raya for this uh, opportunity to partner with you once again in terms of tourism management. Rest assured that we are committed to continue to have partnership with you in all aspects of the university. This could be in research, this could be in instruction, and also this could also be in uh, professional community extension. Thank you very much. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat.
All right. Thank you, Dr. Pets Castillo, for that very engaging talk and for gracing and welcoming our participants for this webinar. At this point in time, we are very fortunate to hear a welcome message from the Dean of Economics and Business Faculty. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored and let us all welcome Dr. Eselinchi Sastrudiharu. A virtual applause, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, good day and greetings, everyone. Hello from Bayangkara, Jakarta Raya University, Indonesia. On behalf of uh, the President of Bayangkara, Jakarta Raya University, we would like uh, to thank uh, the University of Mindano for the collaboration that has been established in the context of a scientific collaboration in the form of this webinar session. Tourism, Indonesia, and the Philippines. These three words describe archipelagic countries that attract tourists. The economic and tourism sector are closely related. The higher number of tourists will have an impact on country revenues. The next impact is to grow the economic of uh, local communities. The COVID-19 pandemic has a significant impact on decreasing the level of tourist arrival in Indonesia and uh, maybe other, other uh, tourist destination countries. By the end of uh, fourth quarter of 2020, it has decreased by 88.45% uh, year on year. This pandemic condition is also momentum quality to improvement and sustainable strategies in promoting tourism in the new normal uh, era. Competitiveness is the key word for change. Several aspects in the travel and tourism uh, com competitiveness index indicator are uh, concern for each tourist destination country, safety and uh, hygiene will become a concern and uh, will be followed by price competitiveness. This thing is not only the task of the government, but also all aspects in societal life. By holding this webinar, we are invited to be more appreciative uh, of the environment and our ecosystem to continue to make enhancement in the aspect of uh, the creative economy. Thank you on behalf of uh, Ubera Jaya, Faculty of Economic and Business uh, to the speaker, uh, Florent Christina, PhD, who was willing to share experience and uh, knowledge. Uh, finally, I would like to thank, uh, to thank you again and for your participant and please enjoy uh, the webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dean, for that uh, very engaging and motivating uh, welcome message. By this time, ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome on screen Dr. Maria Rina T. Calestino, the Assistant Dean of the UM College of Hospitality Education, to introduce our keynote speaker. Thank you, Ma'am Clarence. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are delighted to have with us today to share her proficiency on the tourism, competitiveness, and security implications. Our speaker for this afternoon's session is Dr. Florence Cristina Jimenez, whose career has taken her three years of study, teaching administrative posts, and conducting research. At present, Dr. Jimenez is a college professor, one and currently holding as the Dean of the College of Hospitality Education at the University of Mindanao. Concurrently, she is also the program coordinator of the professional schools in the Master in International Tourism and Hospitality Management in University of Mindanao. Her research specializes on tourism destination competitiveness and learning her into multiple industry contexts with particular focus on the tourism and hospitality sector. More so, Dr. Jimenez extends her research expertise into gaining deep insights for improved decision-making of tourism stakeholders and has been involved in several academic industry projects 
working with the national tourism organizations or the Department of Tourism Region 11 collaboration. More so, Dr. Jimenez is a leader with a strong passion for excellence and integrity, as well as in innovative practices. She also has an in-depth knowledge in outcomes-based education, along with quality assurance. Thus, she is as well an internal lead auditor of the University of Mindanao. Without further ado, please help me welcome our speaker for this afternoon, Dr. Florence Christina Jimenez. Thank you, Ma'am Rina Calestino for that uh, wonderful introduction. Again, good afternoon, everyone. Mabuhay, umadayaw, salamat siyang. I am Florence Christina Jimenez, and I'll be discussing to you today about tourism industry competitiveness and security implications. Let me share my screen. For a while. Okay. Again, uh, allow me to greet everyone a pleasant afternoon. I am delighted and honored to be part of the Universitas Bayangkara Jakarta Raya and University of Mindanao Lecture Series for this school year 2020-2021. As I start my part, allow me first to greet also the presence of the important personalities coming from the uh, UBJ headed by the Vice Rector for Academic Affairs, Professor Tatang Ari Gumanti, Vice Rector for Cooperation, Dr. Dia Ayu Permatasari, and together with, of course, the Dean of the Economics and Business, uh, Dr. Isteaning C. Sastrodiharo, and all the deans and vice deans from the Department of Law, Economics and Business, Engineering, Communication, Computer Science, and Psychology, and all be your chief of cooperation for public relation and marketing. Also greetings to all the UM administration and staff uh, headed by the vice president, um, Dr. Pedrito Castillo. Also thank you for um, the in external relations and international affairs office for facilitating this lecture series. Today, I am tasked to share insights on competitive tourism competitiveness and security implications. This presentation is actually part of our study in progress for our research collaboration with Dr. Sohardi and Dr. Istianing C together with Dr. Calestino. I hope that I could do my share uh, effectively and offer new meaningful um, information. So let's begin with providing you uh, the highlights of this um, webinar uh, for a while. So basically, I'll be talking about the present scenario of the world tourism, tourism in the Asia Pacific, and a snapshot also of the tourism landscape of the Philippines and Indonesia. We'll also try to discuss the indicators of tourism competitiveness, of which safety and tourism is identified as a critical element. And lastly, I'll be sharing to you some recent trends in tourism, implications from and for different tourism subsectors and the ways to go forward towards recovery. So let's start with grasping a picture of or about the tourism sector today. The tourism sector is undoubtedly one of the hardest hit global industry by the COVID-19 crisis, especially in countries where tourism is a vital economic pillar. Major employment and revenue losses were experienced by almost all hospitality and tourism organizations. Tourism being a global and a multi-dimensional sector 
the crippling effects of the global health crisis multiplied across all other allied related tourism and business sectors, such that airlines, lodging suppliers, cruise lines, and even uh, tour operations are among the global tourism value chain companies that have paused operations and are now experiencing significant immediate consequences. As you can see, in the international tourist arrivals for 2020 from January to October, this is a report coming from the United Nations World uh, Tourism Organization. There was a huge plunge in the international tourism demand due to worldwide travel restrictions. According to UNWTO, World Tourism Barometer, there was a 72% decrease in international tourist arrivals recorded from January to October. And reasons for this downfall are slow virus containment, decreased travel confidence, and travel restrictions. Also, between these months, international tourist arrivals in Europe and uh, in, uh, in the Americas fell by eight, uh, 68%. You can see there. And 73% in the Middle East and 69% in Africa. While in Asia Pacific, foreign tourist arrivals um, also decreased. It fell by 82%. Although um, some countries' foreign outbound travel remains uh, small, the US of A, Germany, and even France have been able to gradually recover in the recent months. Another thing, China and Russia also showed signs of recovery and rebound with domestic tourism continuing to thrive and returning to the pre-COVID-19 levels. So based on the UNWTO analysis, there were a number of disadvantages that were identified as a result of the global pandemic. One, most of the tourists who were affected were those who spend more. Thus, it highly affected the tourism business because a lot of tourism expenditures were lost. Second, there were major problems occurred in the airline industry as inbound and outbound travels were mostly restricted. Another downfall is that there is a limited information on past incidences, thus it left the industry unprepared for the present crisis. Most importantly, because of the pandemic, which spread mostly through outbound travels, traveling now is seen as a major risk, which resulted to lesser and decreased number of arrivals. And this is also coupled with health and safety protocol and social distancing, which limits the carrying capacity of tourist destinations, attractions, and establishments. Now, the devastating effects of the global pandemic also threatened tourism operators, planners, and even government and non-government associations with the number of conditions during and even um, predicted after the pandemic. And this include, you have their safety and security risks, um, uncertainty of the length of the pandemic, economic downturn, extent of lockdown and travel restrictions, and uncertainty of the new normal. So uh, a lot of people were still, even if they are saying that we are already in the new normal, but still, we are still uncertain what is this new normal. Analysts uh, reported that COVID-19 would have a substantially different effect on the tourism sector than the previous epidemics. So there are actually three significant distinctions. First, since the early 2000s, when the SARS struck, travel has expanded exponentially, meaning with international arrivals more than doubling between 2000 and 2019. In, um, if, if we go to the recent tourist arrivals, 2000, the year of 2019 actually recorded uh, the highest tourism arrivals worldwide. China, which contributed significantly to this expansion, is now the world's largest outbound tourism sector. And surprisingly, or uh, in fact, also China is the first to recover 
from the um, effects of the pandemic. Second, another distinction of uh, this pandemic is that the rise of social media nowadays as a way of disseminating information has added to the confusion and also heightened fear surrounding travel. So as I've mentioned earlier, uh, traveling now is already perceived as a major risk. And this is also because of information that were posted in social media sites. So this will almost certainly continue throughout the recovery phase. Third, the global population's uh, median age is higher than it has ever been. As a result, there is a wider and more vulnerable population. It means to say that for the first time in history, there were uh, more people who are over 64 years old, and this exceeded the number of children under the age of five in 2018. So even if we could say that there are a lot of baby boomers or um, uh, older tourists that are traveling, but uh, they are also the vulnerable population. As mentioned earlier, with the report from UNWTO on the decreasing uh, international arrivals, experts consider three top three reasons as the main barrier for the recovery of international tourism. And these are travel restrictions, slow virus containment, and um, low consumer confidence and economic environment also. So this is also true not only in a uh, global tourism economy, but also in the Asia Pacific. Also experts expect that the foreign arrivals are expected to recover in the year 2021 this year, but according to UNWTO, it would still take two and a half years before it will return to the pre-COVID or the 2019 levels. As has, has been said earlier that uh, the year 2019 recorded the highest arrival. So it would still uh, took two and a half years for us to recover from that level. And uh, the anticipated rebound is believed to be a result of massive pent up demand. Meaning since people nowadays are um, restricted to travel outside of their home country though, uh, we are more into domestic tourism nowadays, but most of the people or most of these potential tourists are already in the planning stage on where to go when the crisis subsides or ends. So uh, that's also the reason why experts expect that there will be a spike in uh, tourist arrivals. Now let's take a snapshot of the tourism sector in the Philippines and in Indonesia. According to the Philippine Department of Tourism, the number of international tourists who arrive in the country dropped by 83.7% from 2019 to 2020, due to, of course, the coronavirus restrictions. And based from the year and study for the year 2020, the Philippines only received around 1.3 million foreign visitors down from about 8.2 million in 2019. So that's 83.12%. And as a result, the overall, overall amount of inbound tourism receipts or the spending of international tourists in the Philippines fell by 83.12% and from an estimated of 400 82.16 billion to 81.4 billion in 2020. So that's a lot of tourism receipts. While in Indonesia, in 2019, it recorded, uh, it recorded a total of 16 million tourists. However, losses suffered by Indonesia's tourism industry due to the COVID-19 pandemic have exceeded around 9.5 billion US dollars. And uh, according also to a report from Indonesian Hotel and Restaurant Association, the current uh, situation has also led to massive layoffs within the industry. Like for example, in the hotel industry, around 550,000 hotel employees or around 78.5% of the total registered hotel workers were already furloughed 
or laid off. While in the restaurant sector, there is around 1 million of the 1.5 million registered workers have also either been laid off, furloughed since the beginning of the outbreak in Indonesia. Indonesia. So basically, all countries across the, uh, across the globe experience either the same or maybe more than uh, the impact brought about by the pandemic. So how much more for countries who really uh, rely heavily on the tourism economy? It is but an important aspect of the tourism economy to sustain in the business or rather to stay ahead of other competitors as tourists have varying and changing uh, behaviors and attitudes, it is always imperative to continuously offer the best and quality tourism services. But with the effects of the health crisis, the tourism sector is now heavily challenged and uh, heavily challenged on how to maintain competitive advantage. So, before I proceed with the next slide, I would like you to answer this question. Uh, considering that you were once or maybe a potential tourist in the future, um, could you go to slido.com on a separate tab in your uh, PC or laptop, or you could even use your uh, mobile phone? Please uh, key in the code 147.673. Okay, could you see my screen now? Oh. You may use another tab or in your mobile phone and then go to slido.com and key in this code 147673. Or you could also use the QR code. I would like you to answer this question. What qualities make a destination attractive to you as a tourist? Or what attracts you to visit any tourist destination? Okay, so we have one answer, historical landmarks, the view, food, and cost. Traditions. I could see we have 106 participants in this uh, meeting room, in this webinar. So I hope you could also answer. So we also have hospitality and security. So meaning these are the uh, characteristics or qualities of a destination that uh, attracts you most, attract you most. Culture, and then we also have nature. The view, yes, the local food, food, places, nature. So, okay, I think most of you answered uh, culture. Twelve, could I see other uh, answers? Experience, actually part of the um, new normal landscape of the tourism experience nowadays is um, sought after, most sought, sought after by tourists. And through experience, most tourists uh, or tourism operators use storytelling as their uh, main marketing campaign. 
hospitality security okay we have their instagrammable maybe the the view the nature even the culture anything any view from a destination that's instagrammable yes that's for the millennials maybe convenience okay i just last one maybe 20 answers accessibility okay thank you for that so let me go back to my slide. Oh, there's another answer. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, next question is, so these, uh, so these are the qualities that uh, attract you most to visit a destination. Now, let me ask you to rank these qualities or these um, elements of a destination. What makes a tourist destination competitive? So I think I have here uh, 14 elements or factors. And these are actually based on um, different scholars who have uh, studied on destination competitiveness. So you just rank the factors. And I'll, maybe I'll just get the top five later on. Okay. So you would see here from six respondents, top five are natural resources, people, hospitality, safety and security, accessibility and price. Okay, I think that would be good for now. So let me go back to my previous slide. Okay, so you have there the different uh, elements of the destination that you think would attract you and at the same time that you think would make a destination competitive. Okay. So destination competitiveness uh, is actually been widely studied by many scholars in the field of tourism sector. And there were also several models used in determining the competitiveness of a tourist destination. Some of these frameworks, as you can see there, uh, include those of models from Porter in 1990, Ritchie and Crouch in 1993, Dwyer and Kim in 2003, and uh, Heat 2003. So for Porter, um, he specialized on the theory of national competitive advantage of industries, which consists of indicators um you have their um factor in domains demand conditions related and supporting industries at the same time firm strategy and structure rivalry now for um richie and crouch they are more into the core resources attractors and other factors are the same from uh porter but uh they also included destination policy and destination management. For Dwyer and Kim, uh, these are also um, related from uh, the model of Richie and Crouch, but they added supporting and situational factors. And for HIT, uh, it's a different uh, model in which it follows a house-like structure with four vital elements, the foundation, the cement, building blocks, and the roof. Though these models vary in terms, scope, and levels, still the foundation or the major factors or elements of a destination 
competitive, uh, competitiveness are still interrelated. Well, on the other hand, the World Travel and Tourism Council established its own Travel and Tourism Competitiveness Index. So you have there, um, this index has uh, been developed in the context of the World Economic Forum's Industry Program for Aviation, Travel and Tourism as part of the platform for shaping the future mobility. So this is actually, uh, this report is actually undertaken in close collaboration with other uh, global partners, data partners, not uh, to mention a few, the uh, IATA or the International Air Transport Association, and even the World Travel and Tourism Council and World Tourism Organization. So um, if we are to compare it with the previous models, uh, some indicators here or factors uh, were different, but actually still they have the same principles. Now let's see. The recent report generated from uh, that Travel and Tourism Competitiveness Index in 2019. Now let's just uh, focus on Asia Pacific. Based on the gross domestic figures, Asia Pacific has the largest aggregate domestic travel market, meaning Asia Pacific is more focused or uh, emphasizes domestic tourism. It relies on a robust balance of natural and cultural resources to generate tourism. So as you have answered earlier, you are more into um, natural resources of a destination. The region also continues to improve its ab uh, above average level of international openness and travel and tourism prioritization, which indicates strong commitment to trade and travel. Moreover, the growing number of international and domestic travelers are supported by and drive the world's largest and still rapidly expanding aviation market or the airline industry. So as a result, one of the region's greatest leads over global average comes from its air transport infrastructure. And above all, um, Asia Pacific scores above the global average for ground and port infrastructure, as well as the pillars of enabling environment in which this includes safety and security in uh, indicator. And much of this specific competitiveness performance is concentrated in the Eastern Asia Pacific and to a lesser degree in the Southeast Asia, while Southeast Asia leads in terms of the overall improved uh, growth in uh, Asia Pacific. However, despite its um, advantages or um, strengths, Asia Pacific faces a number of challenges. So even though that uh, tourist service infrastructure has improved in Asia Pacific, uh, the Asia Pacific region still have work to do to meet global standards. Another thing, environmental uh, sustainability remained a major constraint. And furthermore, uh, more precise figures indicate that the area is not preserving as much of its natural assets as previously believed. So the region's competitiveness would increase if it can align growing tourism demand with environmental and developmental sustainability. Um, focusing on Southeast Asia, travel and tourism contributes more to the sub-region's gross domestic uh, product. Given the importance of tourism, it's no surprise that the sub-region outperforms the global and Asia Pacific averages in terms of prioritization of the tourism sector and even in international openness. In Southeast Asia, uh, on the other hand, it continues to lag behind in terms of tourism service infrastructure, both globally and regionally. So I think we also have to improve on this area. Most, but not all, of all these sub-regions economies, which um, Southeast Asia has the poor land and port facilities, which makes travel, whether uh, international or domestic um, travel difficult. And for us, in order to compete with Eastern Asia Pacific, we have to uh, improve more on the enabling environment factors such as the health and hygiene pillar 
at the same time, safety and security. So as you can see there, that's just an ex um, extracted data from the Asia Pacific Travel and Tourism Competitiveness Index 2019 rankings. Philippines improved at the fastest pace, climbing four places to 75th place globally. And uh, Philippines also made significant progress in terms of overall infrastructure. While in Indonesia, it's ranked number 40. So Indonesia is 40 and Philippines is on uh, 75. In Indonesia, most uh, Indonesia is um, noted as the most improved in terms of health and hygiene. In the top three indicators of the country include the price competitiveness, prioritization of travel and tour, and safety and security. But again, environmental sustainability remained as a disadvantage or a constraint. So uh, if you would uh, like to see the ranking or the scores in terms of the different um, indicators or factors of uh, travel and tourism competitive index, you have there the different scores. So I just extracted a uh, data from the overall Asia Pacific and Global um, Competitiveness Index. So if you could see there that um, safety and security for uh, different countries, specifically in the Philippines, actually it, uh, it garnered the lowest score for the Southeast Asian destinations. Now, I would like to ask you again, and uh, you could, Please go back to the slide.com. How confident do you feel about traveling for the next quarter? Please go again to slido.com and just use the same code. So since uh, tourism is expected to recover in, in uh, this year, on this year, now ask yourself how confident do you feel about traveling, whether it could be uh, outbound or uh, Domestic travel. So one, not so confident. Okay, so for the 90 respondents, 20 respondents who answered, most of them are confident. By the way, one is not confident and five is very confident. So so from the respond, respondents, majority the answered confident so 57 percent okay thank you again for answering the question now i'll go again to my slide oh. okay Safety and security as indicators of competitiveness. That's why I've uh, asked you earlier if how confident you are to travel. Now, risk by definition is a function of probability and impact, with each type of risk posing unique challenges to sectors in governments alike in terms of preparation, management, and recovery. Risk is no different in the context of travel and tourism. In fact, 
the first decision made by a traveler is the choice of a destination. And the perceived level of safety and security at that destination is an important factor in the decision making process. So human behavior is primarily motivated by the desire for safety. And it's because uh, this is part of our um, um, secondary needs. If potential tourists are worried about violence, the quality of drinking water, the risk of environmental conditions, quality of healthcare and other factors, other comparative advantages may be overlooked. So for the most part, today's travelers and visitors seek out locations that provide a sense of security and protection. While a small percentage of visitors seek out the unsafe because there are still um, there are those tourists who are um, adventure like they would want to go to extreme um, adventures, but there are still majority of visitors who would want to know what the industry is doing to protect them, as well as how well positioned a local industry is in the event of security or safety problem. So the sense of security and the destination encompasses not only local security concerns, but also security in the form of um, health risk, protected natural environments, and even crime rate, among other things. So it is highly likely that visitors would avoid traveling to risky countries or regions, making the tourism industry less competitive for growth um, in these areas. Now, for the purpose of calculating security index for other countries, the overall cost incurred as a result of the presence of those security risks are uh, considered. So what security challenges impact tourism business? So uh, as I've said earlier, some of these include health uh, and safety risks, personal data security, even political security, legal protection, and among others. And uh, for some, environmental conditions, whether man-made or natural uh, disasters, are also considered as risks. So apart from those indicators mentioned, uh, tourism safety and security are also based on these elements. Now, um, going back to the... Um, Safety and security is an indicator of competitiveness. There's also a report from um, the World Travel and Tourism Council in which they have um, distinguished the set of risks in travel and tourism. So we have the low and the high probability low impact events. So when you say low probability but high impact, these uh, type of risks Post harm to destination image and long periods of recovery in terms of physical infrastructure. So low probability, meaning um, we would not expect that there will be more of these risks, but it will uh, pose greater impact for the industry. While the high probability or low impact events, these events actually occur every day, whether it's a petty crime, whether a petty theft, or uh, just a um, um, weather conditions, but these events are still considered high impact for some individuals who are directly uh, affected. Economic impact also varies widely and in some instances can be as costly as high impact events. Now, these high probability low impact events would also vary depending on um, how tourism is uh, treated in a destination, like for example, if it's uh, the major um, uh, economic industry for the destination. So the perceived level of safety and security is a key decision-making factor for travelers. But still, uh, there are a majority of incidents involving travelers that are either high probability or low probability. Emerging risks such as digital, security and even resource scarcity will also become an important um, condition or um, element for the safety and security. So for the World Travel and um, Tourism Council, they have identified these risks. 
environmental, geopolitical, epidemics, and now the emerging risk is digital security. Um, Tarlo in 2011 also identified um, types of tourism crimes. Now, crimes are not just um, um, committed by the host residents, but According to his study, crimes can also be committed by tourists themselves and even the sector. Also, another study of Tarlo, Tarlo he identified the major uh, destinations that are targeted by terrorists. So it included uh, Bali in Indonesia and lastly, Philippines. So why is tourism targeted by terrorists? So there are reasons. Number one, tourism is big business. So most terrorists uh, seek to destroy larger economies. Another, tourism is interrelated with multiple other industries. So once the tourism sector is affected, thus an attack of this sector may also wipe out a number of secondary industries. So like, for example, tourism is... Um, uh, related to aviation industry, even to agriculture and other types of industries. Tourism is also um, media oriented. It means to say, if tourists or terrorists rather, if terrorists would want to have or would seek to have uh, publicity, they would really target first tourism industry. Tourism also deals with the constant flow of new people. So there would be a uh, difficulty for um, the government or the administration to easily identify terrorists because they could simply blend in with tourists. Tourism is also a nation's parlor. It means to say tourism in a destination uh, serves as a brand or serves as a, a good reputation or image for a country. So if, if a terrorist would want to... Um, wipe out the image of that destination. So most likely, the first one to be affected is the tourism sector. Terrorists also send to seek targets that offer at least three out of these four possibilities. Potential for mass casualties, of course, mass publicity, good image, great economic damage, and destroys an icon. So if you lump this all uh, factors or the elements that attract uh, terrorists to tourism, then uh, there would be a major casualty or effects for the tourism sector at the same time for the uh, whole economy. Now, let us see uh, the ranking and the scores of Southeast Asian destinations in terms of safety and security competitiveness. So this is just a continuation of the previous um, uh, report that I've presented. So if you could see there, the top three countries with uh, high scores in safety and security include Singapore, Brunei, and Malaysia. Indonesia also belong to the top five, while unfortunately, Philippines uh, has a score of 3.6. So uh, it's, all, uh, it's really stated there in the report that Philippines has to improve on this indicator. Now, with the new normal, security risk is a result of the digitalization because, of course, we all know, as we all know, that most of our um, processes or activities now are done online. So the COVID-19 pandemic has hit tourism hard and by this extension also the hospitality sector. It's not just the industry, but also even for us uh, in the academe. At any time of swinging changes, responsiveness is crucial. In transforming the business to suit the new situation is now essential. But um, apart or together with um, meeting the needs of the industry, of the customer or of the new clients, there is also the risk in terms of um, digital security. So, Again, uh, the pandemic has a major impact on um, the sector. And because we are indeed uh, required to 
um, be at par, still the same with the other competitors and destinations, we have to adapt to the new environment. And of course, with the use of uh, digitalization or with digital digitalization. So because of this, a number of risks in uh, digital security were identified. So there were data breaches that were be, uh, become a common thing nowadays. Cybersecurity can become a, a criterion for the client's choice of hotel. So since most uh, processes now, specifically in uh, accommodations, uh, self-check-ins or even um, reservations are done online. So cybersecurity, aside from safety and security, health and hygiene are um, criteria for the guest's decision making. And when it comes to instilling a sense of security and confidence in the client's mind, cybersecurity is critical. So this is also critical in engaging guests to return. So if uh, previous studies concluded that uh, tourists are only satisfied with the facilities, with the service quality, now in the new normal, we also have to emphasize the need for uh, cybersecurity because it will not only affect tourist satisfaction, but it will also affect their intention to revisit. So there are uh, examples of uh, cybersecurity issues like, for example, um, in British Airways, they suffered a major cybersecurity breach when uh, hackers entered their systems and managed to steal personal details from among 380,000 cards. And uh, it is also assumed that hackers scrape security codes associated with card payment. So even with the use of credit cards, um, there could be a lot of data that can be hacked. Um, there's also another instance in uh, Marriott International, wherein they announce that one of their reservation systems has been uh, compromised with up to 500 million customer records, including credit card and passport numbers being filtrated by the attacker. So that was actually worth $72 million. So even if we are very dependent now on... Um, um, digital assets or uh, digital digitalization, there is also there are also uh, implications coupled with this uh, dependence on not just on tourism but also on um, online processes. Now let's talk about uh, to proceed with other um, challenges. Let's also see other trends in travel in tourism. And also, uh, let me uh, share to you also other um, recovery strategies from different uh, countries and implications um, in the tourism sector. So where are we now? So um, before we have um, learned some of the trends in travel and tourism sector, trends in arrivals, at the same time, um, the indicators of competitiveness. Now, what is the present scenario of uh, tourism? What is um, tourism doing or the sectors, the different destinations doing now? So several countries are already eyeing the possibility of travel bubbles. Like for example, Singapore is gradually reopening restricted safe travel agreements with its Southeast Asia neighbors, including Brunei, Malaysia, Vietnam, and most recently, Indonesia. So they are trying to recover, but um, some of them are, are mostly focused or centered on domestic tourism. Another thing, uh, some international flights have also resumed. While in um, Timor-Leste, it remained inaccessible to international visitors and also in the Philippines, it still prohibits non-essential leisure in tourism travel. So basically for now, what is being uh, considered is these travel bubbles. Travel bubbles is actually uh, or is also considered as a travel corridor or it's also uh, called as a travel bridge or a corona corridor. 
So it, it uh, do away with the usual waiting period for a select group of travelers from certain countries where the coronavirus has been constrained. So normally in a travel bubble, there's a set of countries who agree to open their borders to each other, but uh, they should keep their borders uh, to all other countries closed. So um, this, is, uh, been, this has been started in some countries, like for example in Thailand, but uh, since there was a case where um, there was a um, spread of coronavirus, uh, travel bubble between uh, Thailand, Singapore, and China have uh, stopped briefly and this also um, influenced the delayed plans for the reopening of their tourism. Where are we now? Now, based on a new study, international air arrival numbers into Southeast Asia for the period from January 1 to April 15, 2021, still have uh, low arrivals. And also, domestic air arrivals in individual Southeast Asian countries are improving, with Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Philippines climbing to 17%, 20 and 24% of 2019 levels. But these are um, merely because of domestic arrivals. Tourism way forward. Now let's see the trends in demand. So the COVID-19 or the pandemic is shifting travelers' preferences and behaviors toward the secure, predictable, and even low risk. In the short term, domestic and regional holidays, intensive research and planning, and outdoor activities will reign supreme with tourism businesses and destinations already adapting. So basically with the changes, the disruptions and the uncertainties, it is high time for us to conduct researches and to know the uh, changing market behaviors. The demand would spark uh, would be sparked by proactive communication. So as you can see there, the report from the uh, World Travel and Tourism Council, 58% of travelers will take primarily domestic and domestic tourism. Also as health. of it would all also be sired. Traveler health and safety as priority is also a prime criteria. So let's just look um, on the different demands of today. So what travelers will look for? Domestic and regional rebirth, as I've said. Uh, they are also more into adventures, extreme, but domestically um, based recent activities. They would like to have the off-grid experiences, meaning they would like to search out for the off-beaten uh, off past. They would also find comfort in planning, so they have a long-term planning now. And travelers are more empowered because they are already educated and they are more um, meticulous. And of course, there's also an expect uh, return of the business travel. So these are just some of the ways we could, um, uh, destinations rather, could innovate in terms of domestic tourism. So we would like, maybe we would like to reorient on uh, services. It's also high time now for um, the destinations or tourism planners to identify new niche markets. Like for example, uh, adventure tourists, backpackers, uh, also, there's a uh, development of tourism in rural areas. And um, there is also a um, advantage in supporting small, medium, and enterprise startups. Like, for example, uh, UNWTO has just uh, recently uh, promoted their um, rural tourism startup. 
And of course, we have to better understand domestic tourists. Now, what are the implications in terms of demand? So um, we have to cater more to the primary demographics. Let's say, for example, the young domestic and less risk averse travelers. We also have to prioritize independence and authenticity. So since community-based tourism would also uh, is expected to flourish nowadays, it's also very uh, imperative to uh, ensure authentic, original, and uh, highly cultural tourism services. We also have to build customer confidence online since tourism is heavily based on social media. So we have to uh, consider the information disseminated through online. Uh, innovation to fit. Also, uh, there's a need to sustain employee connection since we are, uh, most of us are working from home, but it's uh, still uh, very important to continue the connection with our employees and also partnering with local communities. In terms of health and safety, the trends now, of course, number one, safety. And there is also the trust factor. So uh, even if the vaccine becomes available, travelers are likely to be more cautious. So following the pandemic, tourists will be more likely to seek out destinations with established infrastructures on safety and security. And also in the light of the growing health and safety concerns, travelers will increase uh, increasingly rely on authorities that they trust most. There's also a need to define new norms and standards in uh, tourism, like for example, of course, we know these social distancing, um, uh, travel restrictions. Um, also, travelers are likely to avoid some of the COVID-19 affected destinations. So maybe uh, with uh, the situation that we are now and with the time that we have, we could uh, switch to innovating and even developing other tourism products and services. Now, what are the implications of those trends? So we have to set the gold standards, plan for the unexpected. We have to disseminate good information, marketing, um, partner for success, educate our own employees and we have to prepare our destination. So just an example of setting the gold standards. Um, uh, Philippines was named as the 100th country to receive the stamp after being assessed, having in place health and safety guidelines. So we uh, they call this a safe travel stamp. So this stamp uh, marks the Philippines or other destinations that are uh, adopting globally standardized health protocols. And aside from uh, being promoted in the media, um, the recipients of this stamp or award benefit from global exposure at the same time vast network of World Travel and Tourism Council member organizations. So this is actually from the website of the World Travel and Tourism uh, Council. And... Um, the safe travel stamp is not only for hotels, but for all other tourism related uh, subsectors, like for example, aviation, even uh, shopping, tour operators, travel planners, uh, tourism establishments, even tour guiding. So if you could go to their uh, website or um, uh, series of protocols that could also, of course, be by the different tourism establishments. So let's just see which destinations have the staff. So there are a lot of countries worldwide, worldwide and uh, each country also uh, there are identified establishments. So basically in um, Asia Pacific, uh, at least uh, we have uh, Indonesia and Philippines. Now implications for uh, of the crisis. So um, because of those mentioned um, challenges and uh, trends, we are now um, advised or um, expected to collaborate more with the industry as an academe. We have to collaborate with the industry and even to uh, public sectors. 
to improve crisis preparedness, management, and recovery plans. Though we are in the academe, but of course, uh, since we are expected to um, um, match the needs of our industries through our services offered to our students, then we also have to collaborate with these sectors. We also have to prioritize the formation of uh, trust-based coalitions, the assessment of readiness, and the development of emergency action plans. But of course, I believe that uh, these have also been uh, being implemented now by our uh, different sectors. There's also uh, immediate activation uh, in need of emergency plans, not just for the industry, but also for the academia. And um, since tourists are um, highly um, or prioritizing safety and security in the trust factor, they need to have um, transparency, readiness, and confidence. So we have to ensure our tourists that uh, they could trust us with our um, tourism products and services. So these are just some of the ways that we could also uh, move forward in terms of innovation and digitalization. So we have to expect that consumers or travelers, uh, travelers now are highly um, dependent on technology. So in all touch points of uh, tourism, from reservations down to arrivals and even to the point of the return, we have to uh, incorporate the use of, um, 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 of course, uh, computer and internet. And also, uh, there's also demand in contactless uh, convenience, um, the rise of virtual tourism, since we are uh, relying more now in um, online processes. So maybe we could also innovate in terms of virtual tourism. And um, also, businesses will have to adapt and accelerate their digital transformation from touchless technology to automated services. And in terms of uh, threat prevention, cyber risks for the sector and its uh, customers will also rise as a result of a number of factors, including emerging technology, the spread of fraud, and even the consequences of remote working. So these are the implications. So it's, it's still the same with um, other implications in terms of safety and security. But of course, um, businesses will really have to innovate to be at par, and most importantly, to co-collaborate with their competitors. So my uh, key takeaways for uh, this presentation include uh, disruption in travel and tourism industry has reshaped the tourism landscapes as well as market behaviors. In, uh, as a result, we have to um, invest more on uh, studying the market studying their uh, changing behaviors for us also to innovate and develop products that would uh, match their changing demands and needs. Competitive collaboration is also important to survive and recover. So um, gone are the days that we have uh, to compete with, our, um, uh, with other destinations or maybe co to compete with other uh, sectors in the industry. It's a, uh, it is high time now for us to collaborate, to partner or to link with um, our co-industry sectors and even other destinations, like for example, um, implementing the travel bubbles for us to recover. Um, it's also very important to promote domestic tourism as uh, more and more travelers are now uh, demanding uh, uh, travels within their country or within their region. It's also very important to venture on new tourism niches if uh, before there is uh, more demand on like, for example, um, other mass tourism sector, uh, mass tourism types, or they would want to go to uh, uh, leisure destinations. For now, we could identify new niches, like for example, community-based tourism, adventure tourism, or even agri and wellness tourism. It's also um, um, highly important for organizations to consider going green. So there's a need to uh, enhance more 
the environmental management skills and sustainable tourism because as uh, if we review the result of the competitiveness index, environmental sustainability is a major constraint. Digital skills, of course, are a must, not only for the uh, uh, industry, but for the students and even for the uh, faculty and administrators. And lastly, cyber resilience and um, vigilance. So customers are placing their confidence in businesses to secure their uh, personal information. So there is also a must that we have to integrate security in our strategic vision. So that's my key takeaways. Now, lastly, before I'll end, I would like you to um, provide your own key takeaway for this session. So uh, please uh, log on again to slide.com and key in uh, 147673 and provide your own key takeaway or how you have understood the presentation for this afternoon. I hope I have uh, delivered well my part and hope that you have um, gained information from the presentation. Okay. This will be the last um, activity. Oh, thank you. So whether it's a comment or a suggestion or um, highlights that you have uh, learned from this session. Yes, considering the scenario that we have, security is important for the tourism industry. Tourism industry must be flexible to adapt to constant changes. Maybe just one last. Oh, so collaboration, security is an indicator, inspiring, new knowledge, perspective, and collaboration. So thank you for those answers. So I let me leave you with this quote. That's actually the end of my presentation. I hope I have done well my part. 
Thank you for listening. All right, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Again, let us give a round of applause for our keynote speaker for this webinar, Dr. Florence Christina M. Jimenez. So definitely we have presentation uh, in terms of uh, the importance of uh, focusing on tourism competitiveness because we all know that uh, we have no choice at this point in time but to restart tourism because we all know that uh, tourism is the key tool to boost our uh, economy because if there's one billion tourists, there will be one billion opportunities. But uh, because of the pandemic, what we really need is to impose controls, control measures and uh, to avoid risk. So that's it. So at this point in time, on behalf of the University of Mindanao, Philippines, uh, in collaboration with the uh, University of uh, Raya Jakarta, Indonesia, we would like to award this Certificate of Appreciation to our keynote speaker. On screen, the University of Mindanao, Philippines, and you Universitas Bayangkara, Jakarta, Raya, Indonesia would like to award the Certificate of Appreciation to Florence Christina M. Jimenez for being the resource person during the UMUBJ International Collaborative Lecture Series, which is part of the Mutual Recognition Initiative between the two universities. This certificate is given on April 30, 2021 via Zoom, signed by the President of the University of Mindanao, Dr. Guillermo P. Torres Jr., and the Director of Universitas Bayangkara, Jakarta Raya, Dr. Bambang Katokasono. Again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for our keynote speaker. Thank you. And now at this juncture, uh, I am honored to present to you uh, that uh, he will give a response to Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Dr. Aloysius Hari Mukti. Okay, thank you. I hope my uh, voice is clear enough, uh, Ms. Clarence. Okay, thank you. So thank you to the Dean yes, College sir. of Hospitality, yes, Dr. Florence Christina Jimenez. And then thank you to the Dean of Faculty of Economic and Business, Dr. Istian uh, I guess this is uh, my part to have a discussion a little, little bit. Uh, regarding tourism and then Indonesia and also Philippines. So uh, my opening remarks will be it's more fun in the Philippines. So yes, I hope I can see this uh, uh, soon. Every, every main street in Manila and for sure Philippines knowing how much to ensure we will having fun time during our stay in Philippines, especially the culinary. Yes, I love it so much, culinary in Philippines, adabo, everything, you can mention it. Uh, and thank you for this uh, session to uh, Dr. F uh, Florence. I did the survey online, uh, doctor. Uh, security and hospitality is my answer. That is the most important things as a tourist. And then uh, the second survey uh, online is, uh, is, are you confident enough for traveling? Yes, uh, for sure. I'm, uh, I'm waiting uh, for the uh, Philippines and the, and the rest of uh, other countries open for their Im immigration. Uh, that will be the uh, answer uh, for your survey online. Uh, and for this uh, session, actually, uh, Finally, uh, we have a broader view of safety and security. It could be in terms of hygiene, every kind, hygiene of food, hygiene of our stay during vacation. Political issue is also uh, uh, safety and security. Uh, a uh, a terrorism is also uh, playing important things in our concern. And then crime like uh, pocket picking, uh, snatching back, I guess that I, there is not a, a very bad signal for our tourists. Uh, that will be um, few from safety and security. 
And also I put emphasize the from the session that the importance of collaboration among academic government or public sector and industry. So uh, actually, how can we contribute to the community? How can we contribute to the industry uh, as a researcher, as a scholar, or as an ac academic? That will be, um, I put notice to the uh, Dr. Florence presentation today. Uh, furthermore, I do agree that our focus here is to improve the indicators of travel and tourism competitiveness index. Uh, we have 14 indicators, if I did not mistaken, but actually what is can be done or our contribution to this improvement as an academic member or a scholars. Actually, we have two strong and competent faculty. We have a college of hospitality from University of Mindanao, and then we have also faculty of economic and business Ubarajaya. These two synergies can contribute to those aspects of competitiveness. Uh, in my opinion, uh, synergized multidiscipline will solve problem more widely. Tourism and economic creative is the concrete concern. This enhancement indeed need the collaborations between two faculty. In the field of management, we have and familiar with SWOT analysis, how we do analyze strength, weakness, opportunity, and threats. In accounting, we are familiar enough to do the small medium enterprise financial statement. But it seems we are lacking in tourism aspect. We do not have any perspective idea in terms of tourism. So uh, management, accounting, and tourism, we can collaborate to enhance the competitiveness index. That will be our contribution, one of our contribution as a researcher, academic, or scholars. So actually from this session, this webinar, uh, here is our opportunity to help in hand and complete each other. Two aspects, two faculty, two university, and why not it will become in collaboration of two countries. Yes, so uh, we have so many things to fix up and of course preparing a new normal of tourism habit that will be the our uh, assignment that will be our uh, responsibility as a researcher to contribute accordance to our competence so uh, i hope that we can uh, have a concrete output to the community, especially enhancement of competitiveness index. Uh, I guess that will be the uh, comment or suggestion or discussion regarding this webinar sessions. But if this okay, and if I can have three minutes, I would like to uh, asking to the Dr. Florence, uh, what is actually Philippines can share with us, especially in government support to the tourism and travel in terms of, uh, especially after this vaccine program, doctor, uh, actually what uh, what is Philippine can share with us in terms of government policy that support uh, travel and tourism in the new era? Thank you, Ms. Clarence. Okay, um, thank you, uh, Dr. Aloysius Harry Mukti. Uh, to answer uh, your question, um, I've mentioned earlier in, um, in one of the slides that um, there is already uh, agreements between uh, countries such as, for example, uh, Singapore, Malaysia, uh, Brunei, China, and Thailand in terms of travel bubbles. So maybe uh, we could also start. Uh, this is just actually uh, from my own perspective from the uh, academic environment. Maybe uh, Philippines and Indonesia could also look for ways in which uh, the two countries could um, identify the possibility of uh, travel bubbles. Um, we know that uh, in the Philippines, uh, travelers, whether um, foreign or domestic travelers, are more into um, nature, uh, cultural, and even um, adventure tourism activities. And we also know that these type of tourism services and products are also available in Indonesia. Then maybe might as well... Um, uh, tourism planners or operators could uh, develop 
a different or a new um, package focusing on these um, tourism products and um, also identifying um, the possibility of travel bubbles. Like for example, we will uh, Philippines will only um, accept foreign uh, arrivals from Indonesia or uh, travelers from Indonesia and uh, vice versa. Uh, Indonesia will only uh, accept um, inbound travelers from the Philippines. And aside from that, uh, maybe we could also um, uh, discuss initiatives in terms of um, um, increasing uh, the market intelligence. Like, for example, um, uh, what we are doing now, uh, we are uh, partnering with UBJ for a, a study on tourism competitiveness between um, uh, Indonesia and Philippines. And uh, with this, we might or we will be, we, we could identify um, possible uh, or we could identify or establish strategies that could uh, help develop or innovate uh, new tourism products at the same time, um, meeting the expectations of today's travelers. And also um, uh, in the near future, maybe we could also um, include um, the government sector in our, our collaborations. Like for example, um, at present, we are collaborating with our uh, Department of Tourism in Region 11 uh, for uh, market intelligence and uh, for their part to um, provide us training expertise. So maybe we could also um, extend that to uh, Indonesia or even to your uh, university. That's all. Okay, thank you, Ms. Moran. Thank you very much. I would like to say thank you again to Dr. Elijah Hadi Mukti for uh, sharing your own perspectives and insights about the topic tourism industry competitiveness and security implications. And now uh, to develop also a highly engaging uh, and interactive uh, environment uh, in this webinar activity, uh, I would now facilitate the uh, commencement of the open forum. So I am um, uh, inviting our 106 participants in this uh, Zoom room that uh, questions are welcome if you have clarifications and inquiries, please do not hesitate to raise that one. Uh, you may use uh, the, you may raise your hand or you may put your questions in the chat box and I will read that one for you, or you can uh, unmute yourself, enable for you to be uh, to raise your question, because our speaker for this afternoon are very willing to, to cater your uh, questions and clarifications. In the chat box, there's a question here. Is there a presenter's link? Uh, probably uh, after this webinar, uh, a, record, uh, a, re a recording video for this presentation will be shared to you. Uh, a, a video will be available after this uh, webinar activity. So for our participants, uh, as long as you have uh, registered on the link, uh, definitely uh, you'll be receiving a, uh, a message on your email or a notification uh, with regards with the recorded video. So... Do uh, you have any questions for our dear participants, especially from uh, our uh, participants from Indonesia? We are open also uh, for, uh, we, uh, with questions coming from our colleagues from the Philippines. So I guess, uh, Dean Florence, there are no questions raised in the chat box, but uh, there are, uh, will be raised. Uh, Dean Florence, maybe they can uh, email you or contact you on your personal email. Yes, so uh, that's it. If you have uh, questions that you want uh, follow-up questions with regards with the uh, uh, presenter's topic, do not hesitate to uh, contact our resource speaker for this afternoon. 
All right, so since there are no questions raised, so I guess the pre uh, presentation is really clear and uh, the participants uh, grasp the uh, important topic uh, and they really understand what the topic is all about. And we hope that uh, this uh, the topic will be uh, useful for you, especially on your own uh, career and uh, wherever you are right now, especially on the academic uh, environment or our professors and colleagues from Indonesia. So moving on. So we are now about to uh, conclude or close this program. But before uh, that, uh, I, I'll introduce to you the Assistant Dean of the University of Mindanao College of Hospitality Education. May I call her again? Dr. Maria Rina Calistino for her closing remarks. Thank you so much, Mang Clarence. To our esteemed speaker, Dean Florence Cristina Jimenez, Vice Rector for Academic Affairs, Dr. Tatang Ari Gumanti, Vice Rector for Cooperation, Dr. Dia Ayo Permatazari, Dean of Economics and Business Faculty, Dr. Ishangishi Sastra Diharo, all Dean and Vice Dean from the Law, Economics and Business, Engineering, Communication, Computer Science and Psychology, all Bureau Chief of Cooperation, Public Relation and Marketing and Student Affairs, as well as the Program Heads of the College of Hospitality Education, the Faculty Members and Hospitality and Tourism Masters, and undergraduate students of the University of Mindanao. Good afternoon. Today, we are once again gathered for the second session of the webinar series as part of the Mutual Recognition Initiative of the University of Mindanao and Universitas Bayangkara Jakarta Raya, Indonesia, with the objective of determining that today's tourism its global context, specifically the tourism in the Philippines and Indonesia, the tourism destination competitiveness, its safety and security as indicators of competitiveness, the travel and tourism trends, recovery strategies and implications as given to us by our dear speaker for this afternoon. As the training industry evolves to meet the needs of the new modality, it's never been more important for any institutions to have a system in place that is flexible and accommodates change. This is where collaboration takes place. As we all know, collaboration is a working practice whereby individuals or institutions such as us work together for a common, pur common purpose to achieve common benefit, and that is solely for our students. It foster openness and knowledge sharing, but also some level of focus and assignment of responsibility for capturing the emergent results of the collaborative effort. One of the best things about working collaboratively with people who bring different skill sets and backgrounds to the table is learning from their, from their experiences. Collaborating with team members or even different teams should be thought as of as a learning experience, and we should be trying to make the most out of it. This means asking for feedback and opinions, sharing knowledge, finding out how your collaborators approach their side of the project, and gaining a better sense of how they work. Learning from colleagues is not just the benefit of collaboration. It's the first step towards building a workplace culture centered around learning and development. Teams that collaborate not only have an opportunity to learn from each other, they'll also gain an understanding of the other's team's perspective. So you get a chance to hear their side of things. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Aloysius Hari Mukti for that agreeable data and information during his response on this webinar. Thank you so much, sir. It was indeed a successful half day activity for us, both UM and UBJ, that is vital in the delivery of our educational courses in this collaborative effort. It is our hope that with our activity today, 
we will now be armed with a variety of functionality that we can use in our own respective responsibilities. In behalf of the Master of International Tourism Management, Hospitality and Management Program, I would like to thank you all for taking part of this webinar, faculty members, and to our MITHM students as participants of this webinar. Again, thank you all. I would like to end this session with a note. By fostering a spirit of collaboration, it gives greater comprehension to you, our dear students, and to looking for your potential career prospects. So have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Maria Rina Calestino for that um, very uh, nice closing remarks. But before we end the program, uh, I apologize. Uh, I have seen in the, in the list of participants that there are two attendees raising their hands. I would like to uh, acknowledge their name, uh, Sir or Mr. Ronaldo Joshua. We still have time to cater your question. Please uh, feel free to uh, unmute yourself, Sir, Mr. Ronaldo Joshua. Or maybe how does. about yes. Yes, the other one. Yes, Dean. Uh, how about uh, Mr. Alto Fuayu, sir? You are allowed to talk right now. You have any questions and clarifications? Okay, so. I'm not seeing uh, any more, Sir Al, Mr. Altof, but Sir, uh, Mr. Ronaldo Joshua is still here. Uh, you have two options, sir. You you can uh, raise your question in the chat box and uh, feel free also to uh, unmute yourself. Any follow-up questions from our speaker? Okay, so I think uh, Dean. Uh, question uh, in your email or maybe uh, he preferred to uh, not raise the question anymore, but uh, I just want to highlight that uh, we from uh, the organizers group of this uh, webinar and especially our keynote speaker is uh, very willing to uh, answer your questions if you have follow-up questions. So I guess that's it. So this concludes our webinar activity for this afternoon. And we would like to say thank you, especially to our uh, esteemed guests and part participants who joined us today. And uh, yes, for further clarifications and questions, please do not hesitate and contact our uh, organizer from University of Mindanao and uh, in collaboration with uh, University of Mindanao Philippines. Yes. Nanti, kalau selesai ini gimana? ada lagi yang terjadi nak tahu. Oh, Mampu kan? How about some photo op? Photo op and the evaluation. Yes, yes, yes. Can you put the evaluation link in our chat box as well? Thank you. All right, so uh, before we end this webinar activity, I uh, invite everyone to please uh, show you your uh, face on cam. You may turn on your camera for a photo documentation, photo opportunity. Okay, so are you ready now? Let me check if uh, maybe I can uh, from our IT. 
Can you check if the participants are turning on their cam? Mom Isa, are you there? Be, they have to be assigned as or as host so that they could also turn on their camera. I'm not sure. Yes, Dean, I have no um, access here to. So that we could see other participants. Ah, okay. We could only see okay, the panelists. Okay, only the panelists. Okay. So I have, uh, the good thing is I have screenshot a lot of pictures already, uh, even from the start of this activity for for the set of the panelists. So thank you very much again, uh, Dr. Aloysius Sari Mukti and uh, Dr. Ishalisa Strudi Haru. Thank you very much for your time and your presence for this webinar. And again, so uh, let me leave you one quote that all together may we have one planet vision for a responsible recovery of our tourism sector. Mabuhay, salamat sore, and thank you very much for attending this webinar. Um, Clarence, can we have the evaluation link? Yes, yes. yes um, I will... Uh, Send you the evaluation link now at the chat box for a moment. One last post. Uh, let's have one last post. It will be in a count of one, two, three. Smile. Okay, I think that would be good, Mamiza. Um, how about the evaluation link from Clarence? Is it already ready? Yes, yes, ma'am. Um, for the participants, only uh, wait for a while for the evaluation link. Okay, I am sharing this, uh, the evaluation link on the chat box. I hope you can uh, access it. <laughs> Seeing the link. Yes, ma'am. It's already yes. Yes. Okay, so uh, sharing the evaluation link to our dear participants. Uh, please access the evaluation link to your chat box. And uh, we highly value the, your, your comments, suggestions, and your uh, ratings for this uh, webinar activity. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you to Dr. Florence, Dr. Rina. Thank you, Dr. Mokti. And Dr. Sastra Di Harho. Yeah.
me down I'm gonna send the floor, gonna drown them out This is brave, this is bruised, this is who I'm meant to be This is me Gracias.